This is a truly collaborative effort. There's a lot of people here who are involved in this pathway, uh, a lot of people who aren't here who are involved in this pathway, both in my own trust and in other trusts in Epsom, Royal Marsden, and St. George's. And I'd like to acknowledge all of those people who've really gone out of their way to make this uh, a true success. Prostate cancer is a growing health burden. Uh, we think by 2030, because of increased awareness, increased testing, that the number of new cancer cases of the prostate is going to reach about 63,000. Currently, it's about 40,000. And if I drew the mortality line on this graph, then it would pretty much be flat-lined. In other words, we are diagnosing more and more men. We are treating more and more men radically often and yet we are making very little impact on m the mortality rate itself and it's a big issue and the reason for that is that the diagnostic pathway is fraught with errors so when you have a blood test called prostate specific antigen and it comes back above three or above four, depending on which level you use, a man undergoes a back passage biopsy through feces, 10 to 12 needles shot randomly into the prostate in the hope that you will find the important cancer. You often find unimportant cancers that don't need to be treated. You miss the important cancers and you misclassify important as unimportant because of a glancing blow. And regardless of what you find, the majority of men, because they're worried they have cancer, undergo whole gland radical surgery or radiotherapy, which does carry some benefit in terms of improved survival, roughly about 3 to 5% benefit at 10 to 15 years, so a tiny morta uh, mortality benefit, but huge amount of harm, incontinence 10 to 20%, impotence 50%, rectal toxicity of about 5%. And so the strategy going forward is to accept that there is one cancer that is important in men who do have life-threatening cancers. That imaging is really good at identifying that in about 90 to 95% of men. And if you target that with a needle, you're going to be able to identify it and risk stratify it much better than a random back passage blunderbuss approach. And something I'm not going to talk about is you can then start to contemplate something like a breast lumpectomy or the male lumpectomy where you treat in suitable men just the cancer. By going through the back passage, what we what I didn't mention was that the risk of sepsis has been rising year on year, especially in London and in other metropolises, from about 1% to 2%, and the recent rate was about 7 to 8%. This is life-threatening sepsis. There are 150,000 men in the UK who have trust biopsies every year, and so that sepsis rate is unacceptable. In Europe, there's a million men who have these biopsies, and in the US, it's about a million as well. So this is a big problem. We now, through UK PLC research, really, and research that was led in London and published in the Lancet, on Col Lancet Journal, we now have a tool, multiparametric MRI, uh, this was taken from the brain scientists that were looking at dementia uh, and Alzheimer's. Uh, and so we imaged the prostate with the traditional T2 and T1 weighted imaging, but also looked at how densely packed the cells were and also looked at how contrast enhancement went through the tissue. And this is a man with the prostate in cross-section. He's lying on his back. His front, if you can imagine, his legs are coming out of the screen, heads going into the screen, and we're taking salami slices. This is the back passage. This is the prostate. 
this is growing benign tissue. It's the sort of stuff that if we left him for five years would start to give him poor flow, getting a pet night. And this is the tumor. And we can start to target that rather than randomly taking biopsies from the prostate in, in the hope that we can find it. And the PROMISE study uh, was delivered through funding from the National Institute of Health Research, uh, which is a gov UK government Department of Health uh, institution. Um, myself and Mark Emberton from UCL were co-investigators. And what we showed in this study, this was level one evidence, was that transrectal biopsy had a sensitivity of 48% for detecting life-threatening cancers, whereas MRI had a sensitivity of 93%. The ability of the tests to rule out, in other words, if the test is negative, what's the chance that it definitely is negative in, in reality? In other words, the negative predictive value, trust biopsy was 74% and MRI was about 90%. The reason for the specificity and the positive predictive value being lower for MRI compared to trust biopsy means that if you have a suspicious MRI, you still do need a biopsy to verify what's going on. You can't make the diagnosis purely on the MRI. You still need a biopsy. And so the new pathway, without a doubt, has to be this. That if a man has an elevated PSA, for whatever reason, due to symptoms or because he's asked for it, in the UK we do not have PSA screening program yet. And I say yet because part of these innovations might mean that the National Screening Committee accept that we can start to screen for prostate cancer. And if the MRI is negative, then they can avoid a biopsy. And if it is positive, they can have a targeted biopsy, which will increase the diagnosis and the ability to stratify how risky that tumor is. We've looked at our pathway. This is the imperial uh, data from before MRI was used and after MRI was used. The first thing we found was that 40% of men can avoid a biopsy straight up. This was much higher than in the PROMISE study where 25% of men was proposed as a rate of avoiding biopsy. And the reason why we think in the trial it was lower was because when radiologists are under investigation, if you like, they tend to become a bit more cautious. Um, and our own radiologists during the trial fed back that they felt very worried during the PROMISE trial and tended to over-egg on being cautious. But in reality, about 40% of men could avoid a biopsy. We diagnosed more significant cancers using MRI followed by targeted biopsy. So by any definition, and I won't go into the details of this, but everybody argues about what is clinically important cancer. If we took this definition, which nobody would argue about, any length of medium or high-grade cancer, then we were diagnosing many, many more important cancers early. These are men that would not have otherwise been diagnosed. They would have been discharged back to the GP. The GP may or may not have repeated the PSA. They may or may not have returned back. But if they did return back to secondary care, they would have got another truss biopsy through the back passage. It probably would have missed their cancer again, and they would have been sent out again. And the record that I have is about nine truss biopsies through the back passage over three years. One poor man had nine truss biopsies over three years. And this is the most critical aspect. The biggest problem we have in prostate cancer diagnostic pathway and treatment pathway is that we're over-treating men who should not be treated, who are coming to harm for no benefit, 
for absolutely no benefit other than to assuage their anxiety. By virtually eliminating the diagnosis of clinically insignificant cancers, we have made a huge step, I think, by using MRI. This is a, a big, big step. In the US, the rate of insignificant cancers is probably much higher, it's about 30%, because they have much more PSA testing in the community. So they have lots and lots of men coming with raised PSAs, having trust biopsies, having insignificant cancer diagnosed. And so they diagnose about uh, a quarter of a million men every year, and most of them are treated. Most of them are treated. MRI is really good, but it's a tool that is very, very difficult to get right. You have to have the right scanner, you have to optimize your scans, you have to have the right radiologist, you have to have expert radiologists, and you have to have a person who can do the biopsies really well. So it's quite a complex pathway. And so we do need to build in quality control, quality assurance measures within this pathway. And the rapid pathway within West London RM Partners is precisely that, to deliver MRI, but to do it in a quality assured way. So that there is review of the negative scans by fellow radiologists. There are reviews of the negative biopsies in men who have a positive MRI. Did we miss it? If we did miss it, do we have to repeat that biopsy? How many cancers are we missing as a result of that? And how many men are returning back as a, result of, as a result of us discharging them back to the GP? And then looking at rates of unnecessary radical therapy. I don't think a single man in that 2% who got diagnosed with low-risk disease accepted radical therapy because they were really reassured. They saw an MRI that showed nothing, very significant and they had a biopsy which was 90 to 95% accurate in saying that this was low-risk disease. So they were much more reassured about going on to active surveillance. So we were very fortunate last year in being awarded um, a significant uh, amount of funding. Um, Hassan Kazi and Steve um, Gordon at St. George's in Epsom, uh, as well as Declan Cahill at Marsden and Nettie in Marsden uh, have to be mentioned here. Uh, we have really come together as a region to deliver this. Uh, and this is now taking it one step further. What we've asked for and what we've delivered in one site and a couple of sites, the other sites will start to deliver over the next few weeks, is same day MRI. So a man will be referred in and the first time they will come into hospital, will be to have the MRI in the morning. That MRI will be reported by our radiology colleagues that same morning, and if they need a biopsy, they will be biopsied that same afternoon, if they wish. They don't have to. They don't have to stay the whole day. Uh, we do offer the option of them not staying the whole day, but most men are quite happy to clear the day if they know what's going on. And they will have... Importantly, a targeted biopsy that will use the MRI images, that will use devices that fuse the MRI over the ultrasound images so that we can much more accurately pinpoint that lesion. And importantly, not go through the back passage. Go through the skin and virtually eliminate sepsis. The risk of sepsis from a transperineal biopsy is about 1 in 500, compared to a transrectal biopsy. As I said, in London, the last figure was about 7 to 8%. And we're going to build in quality reviews at every stage. We have a weekly meeting where we look at every single MRI that is negative, and we confirm that it definitely is. And if it isn't on another review, we will call the man back and ask him to consider a biopsy. We will look at every single negative biopsy and make sure that we haven't missed the lesion. And we will look at every single positive biopsy to make sure that it all matches up and the patient is undergoing the right treatment. 
And that requires a huge amount of effort, a huge amount of work. And that process that we are piloting is going to be crucially what we need to look at launching across the UK. This is a lot of detail, but effectively, in Imperial, we were breaching uh, our cancer waiting time targets, uh, and a lot of trusts were. And virtually overnight, I think, as a result of launching the rapid pathway, we became compliant. We were diagnosing men within eight to 12 days. We were treating men well within the 62-day target. And the idea behind this is that the referral would come in, we'd get a senior clinical triage, that would be a senior nurse or a senior uh, uh, doctor, and the patient would be called, the patient would be told about the pathway, and if they agreed, they would be sent a leaflet about exactly what happens on the day, and they would come in and have everything effectively laid out for them. This is the initial pilot results at Imperial. Uh, 99 patients went through the rapid pathway. Interestingly enough, we're now biopsying 75%. I think these rates tend to fluctuate, uh, but you can avoid about a quarter to a third, sometimes as high as 40% of men having a biopsy. And our referral to time from referral to diagnosis has dropped. We were not compliant in the majority of men. Um, we are now very much compliant, and as you can see, our referral to treatment has also uh, significantly improved. So in conclusion, the standard approach to diagnosing prostate cancer is blind to location of the tumor. It's extraordinary. It's the only cancer where we do blind biopsies. The standard approach to diagnosing prostate cancer leads to unnecessary harms. It's a big issue. It's one of the reasons why PSA screening and prostate cancer screening is not permitted because we are harming too many men at the moment. And prostate MRI, I genuinely believe, will now allow at least one third of men to avoid a biopsy, an unnecessary biopsy, and avoid the harms of a biopsy, which is not only sepsis, but unnecessary diagnosis. And we can, I think, and something that hasn't been looked at properly, we can start to diagnose that diagnose those aggressive cancers that we are missing at the moment that are going on to progress and metastasize and lead to that 10,000 mortality rate, which we really haven't touched. We have invested in huge amounts of expensive drugs at the tail end for metastatic disease. These drugs cost 50 to 70,000 pounds, uh, and yet we have not really made a big difference on the mortality rate, but I think we can through early diagnosis of aggressive disease. There is a big challenge, a big challenge in delivery and dissemination, and I think that's where our pathway, um, the rapid pathway through RM Partners will really be able to deliver uh, an example to the rest of the UK to use uh, over the next few years. Thank you.